Hello, you're very welcome back. The artist John Flaxman described Blake's address as 13 Hercules Buildings near the asylum. The asylum was for orphaned girls and it was a workhouse. We might think of Oliver Twist asking for more. But the righteousness of this religion of Priam, it knows only cruelty. We could follow on from Oliver Twist to hard times, where the teacher grad grind obsesses with teaching the children facts. I'll put in a link to a YouTube ex ex um, excerpt from, from Hard Times. Now, Blake believed that war is the result of unfulfilled sex lives. That's what the comment about Thor and Odin and the polar caves is about. There seems no doubt that people who are fil fulfilled might live better in peace. But wait, says Blake, don't rush in now. Don't follow that natural urge to try and create a better world, using justice as your measure. Wait, he says, and join in the delights of the spiritual awakening at the right time. He traces this joy of the spiritual life right down to the life of the fly, who's enjoying the, the dance of life as much as anybody else can. Blake goes on, I believe, then, to allude to the, um, the, the, the prophecy in Zechariah 8.23, where it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days men from all the nations will grasp the garment of a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that the Lord is with you. So, with those things in mind, let's do the reading. For in every nation and every family the three classes are born, and in every species of earth, metal, tree, fish, bird and beast, we form the mundane egg, that spectres coming by fury or amity, all is the same and everyone remains in his own energy. Go forth, reapers, with rejoicing, you sowed in tears, but the time of your refreshing cometh. Only a little moment still abstain from pleasure and rest in the labours of eternity, and you shall reap the whole earth from pole to pole, from sea to sea, beginning at Jerusalem's inner court, Lambeth ruined and given to the detestable gods of Priam, to Apollo, and at the asylum given to Hercules, who labours in tears as looms for bread, who set pleasure against duty, who create Olympic crowns to make learning a burden and the work of the Holy Spirit strife. The Thor and cruel Odin, who first reared the polar caves, Lambeth mourns, calling Jerusalem. She weeps and looks abroad for the Lord's coming, that Jerusalem may overspread all nations. Crave not for the mortal and perishing delights, but leave them to the weak, and pity the weak as your infant care. Break not forth in your wrath, lest you also are vegetated by Tirza. Wait till the judgment is past, till the creation is consumed, and then rush forward with me into the glorious spiritual vegetation, the supper of the Lamb and his bride, and the awakening of Albion, our friend and ancient companion. So low spoke, but lightnings of discontent broke on all sides round, and murmurs of thunder rolling heavy, long and loud over the mountains, while Los called his sons around him to the harvest and the vintage. Thou seest the constellations in the deep and wondrous night. They rise in order, and continue their immortal courses upon the mountains, and in vales with harp and heavenly song, with flute and clarion, with cups and measures filled with foaming wine. Glittering the streams reflect the vision of beatitude, and the calm ocean joys beneath and smooths his awful waves. These are the sons of Los, and these the labourers of the vintage. 
Thou seest the gorgeous clothed flies that dance and sport in summer upon the sunny brooks and meadows. Every one the dance knows in its intricate mazes of delight, artful to weave. Each one to sound his instruments of music in the dance, to touch each other and recede, to cross and change and return. These are the children of Los. Thou seest the trees on mountains, the wind blows heavy, loud they thunder through the darksome sky, uttering prophecies and speaking instructive words to the sons of men. These are the sons of Los, these the visions of eternity. But we see only as it were the hem of their garments, when with our vegetable eyes we view these wondrous visions. There are two gates through which all souls descend, one southward from Dover Cliff to Lizard Point, the other towards the north, Kate Ness and Rocky Dorness, Pentland and John Groat's house. The souls descending to the body wail on the right hand of Los, and those delivered from the body on the left hand, for Los against the east his force continually bends. Along the valleys of Middlesex, from Hounslow to Blackheath, lest those three heavens of Beulah should the creation destroy, and lest they should descend before the north and south gates, groaning with pity, he among the wailing souls laments. And these the labours of the sons of Los in Alamenda, and in the city of Golganusa, and in Luban, and around the lake of Udanadan in the forests of Entooth and Benithan, where souls incessant wail, being piteous passions and desires, with neither lineament nor form, but like to watery clouds the passions and desires descend upon the hungry winds, for such alone sleepers remain mere passion and appetite. The sons of Los clothe them, and feed and provide houses and fields. When Blake talks about the um, the poor humans on Los's right hand side grieving and the ones on his left hand side being delivered it's unusual because it's really rather simple in Blake that uh, you know the left is the bad side the sinister side and the right side the good side so the only thing I can imagine that Blake is doing here is trying to um, explain what's going on with Los from the perspective of the very old Aristotelian world view. So to try and explain that, I, I, I've drawn a little picture using Vesuvian man for Aristotle and uh, and tried to look at Los from, from Aristotle's view of the cosmos. So I'll leave you with that and thank you for listening and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. So here's a picture of Vesuvian man standing in for Aristotle. Well, standing in is the wrong word. We're meant to picture Aristotle lying lying down with his um feet pointing towards the south. And he um he looks over his left shoulder and he sees the east where the day starts and he also sees that this is how the world revolves from from the, starting at the east and then revolving around till it gets to the left so what i think blake is doing is he's he's looking at it uh, giving Lowe's the perspective that the origin of humankind is also um to the left in other words to the east so he keeps his eyes bent towards that and works as the cosmos moves and progresses. Los, in a sense, his progress is being looked at in an orbital manner too.